Hello. Welcome to the Field of Streams, where I, your host Janine McRae, bring you the tiny thoughts that stream from my brain and present them to you as though they're some kind of deep-fried ball of decadent whiz bangability served atop a five-star bed of radulent magda doodle pips. Mmm, neologisms. Now, I cannot promise you much with these weekly nibbles, but I can promise you this. I will not keep you long. Today's missive was inspired by a news story that I read about a somewhat disastrous miscommunication that resulted in half of what the owner thought would be a whole house being built on his property. It's literally like they cut the house in half. Go look at the photo. It's an unfortunate story and the link is in the description of this episode because of course it is. Now you might be thinking, how did Janine get from a story about half a house to writing a story about how the work you create is only half the story and that you yourself, the artiste, is the other half? Fair question. I don't have an answer, but I find it's best not to ask questions like that. So pull your head in, as they say. This post is about answers and provides some tips on how to talk about yourself and your work. I think. I hope. Ooh, let's see. Basic premise. If you love the work you make, you can talk about the other half of the equation, a.k.a. You. Without any further dribble, here is the post. Half the story is not the whole. I am standing at your turnstile, coin in hand. I can feel the cold metal arm on my bare legs, smooth and encouraging, ready to unlock and grant me access to your world. Access to ogle the animals occupying your mind a zoo. I am giddy with the thought of going on a safari tour of your personality in a vehicle piloted by you. We'll creep past your dark enclosures with locked doors, marvel at the deep pools with mysterious creatures lurking, and point at all your idea giraffes as they periscope their dopey heads over your treetops. Will there be a map? A guidebook? (gasps) Will you be giving the audio tour? Your face is a dark cloud, swirling with a mixture of suspicion, panic, and a sort of standoffish nonchalance. I look around for a sign. I'm tall enough so I'm not worried about height requirements, but the coin is getting quite hot in my fingertips, so I'd like to come in. I look around. I look around some more. What is your price of admission? Aouga! Aouga! Communication stations. As the head thoughts keeper in the Metropolitan Mind Zoo of you, your duty is not just to the animals in your care, it's to also advocate for the space in which they are kept. I'm talking about you. I'm saying you need to be able to talk about yourself. Wait, don't run away, I've got a coin. This may shock you, but if you make something halfway interesting, don't be surprised if people want to know more about you. Not so much about the why of the work, although they'll want to know that too, and if you want to get into explaining why one animal in your zoo has a horn while the other has tentacles, go for it. I'm talking more about the how of the work, the who inside it, the who outside it, too. Talking about yourself? Ugh, this sounds like an introvert's flop sweat nightmare, but I honestly don't think it has to be. If you take your thoughts keeper's job, aka yourself, seriously, then you'll just accept that it's part of the job, like mucking out the cages, except this cage has all your shit in it. It's good shit. Let me ease your mind. This menagerie in your mind zoo, you can't help but feed them, right? So what do you feed them? When do you feed them? How often do you exercise them? Do you have a favourite? Where did you get your animals? Which ones are you going to release into the wild and why? What sort of lives do you hope they'll have in the world? If you can answer any of these questions about your work, then guess what? You're already talking about yourself. You're pushing back, I can feel it. But the ability to let people in, even a little bit, will be a huge benefit to you. This is not just how you sell ideas. This is how you make people believe you are serious about those ideas. This coin in my hand is ready to pop in the slot. 
but I can see you're still hesitant. Get your guidebooks out. Let's break it down. Mind Zoo Tour Thoughts for New Thoughts Keepers. The subjects we're going to go into are 1. Identify yourself. 2. Arms inside the vehicle. 3. Watch for mind spiders. And 4. Catch and release. Number 1. Identify yourself. It's possible that you feel like a fraud because you think you're doing something fraudulent. This is going to sound corny, but repeat to yourself, I am a writer. I am a poet. I am a filmmaker. I am a painter. I am a dancer. I am a songwriter. Whatever it is, say it. People will never believe it if you don't believe it. Say it, own it, be it. You cannot be mislabeled or misidentified if you lay claim to yourself. Number two, arms inside the vehicle. Set boundaries for what people can and cannot know about your life. Velvet rope where they can go in your mind zoo and where the employee-only areas are. Protect yourself as fiercely as you protect your work, which means letting people know when they're about to lose an arm with their unasked-for critique. As head thoughts keeper, you decide what people know and what they don't. Find your balance between their curiosity and your creative privacy. That said, look for the arms that are reaching out to help. Don't rip those off. Number three, watch for mind spiders. Ugh, those little thoughts that work their legs, so many legs, into every crack and dark corner of your zoo. There are good mind spiders and bad mind spiders. Good mind spiders dance around, catch mosquitoes and help you snare thoughts in their solvital webs. But other arachnids, self-doubt, jealousy, pettiness, rage, melancholy and the biggest mind spider of all, depression, have their many eyes set on injecting soul venom. You might feel like you shouldn't include spiders on your tour, but it's healthy to talk about them. Sometimes you'll need help to knock down their webs. Sure, mind spiders, good and bad, can enhance your work, but some spiders need to be identified and removed on sight. If you are troubled by bad mind spiders and feeling overwhelmed, don't be afraid to talk about them and seek help when they get super webby. Four, catch and release. Your mind zoo exists purely as a way to fatten up your idea animals before you release them into the wild. And you do need to release them. Being able to talk about this blessed event helps get eyeballs on your creatures. Let people know when you've let them go so they can watch them frolic free You are not a fraud or a sellout for doing this. As an aside, it's okay to hate some of your animals and be glad to see the back of them. They're often the best ones to watch after they've gone. Fatten them up, get them healthy and let them go. Mind zoos are all about the release. Don't hold on to angry tigers or mean dogs. Let them out to maul the art or music or film or literary scene and see how people react to them. Be fine with talking about the part all your animals played in your life, but don't feel like you need to explain the meaning behind them or why they act the way they do. Think of yourself in relation to how you kept them alive. Okay, so, with that in mind, I am standing at your turnstile, coin in hand. You are standing there, the all-powerful, all-knowing thoughts keeper of your mind, Sue. You are not rolling up the welcome mat with the body of your self-confidence inside. You are more than the half a house that bad communication builds. You are a magnificent arc. Tell your story. Communicate your intent. Believe in what you're doing. Know how to talk about yourself and the animals in your zoo before, during and after their release. You don't have to speak for your animals. They'll make their own noises and throw shit and do what they do and they're out of your control once you've set them free anyway. But you can 100% talk about where and how and why those animals grew up. 
And now I'm pocketing my coin because that'll cost you nothing. And there you have it, this week's episode. There were a couple of footnotes to this one. I'll just read one of them. Uh, And one was one of the rules that didn't make it, which was fireflies got a firefly. And it read, it's dark in your mind, Zoo, but it's filled with magical creatures. Mind fireflies are sparks of ideas that yearn to click light into the darkness. Work on getting confident about your fireflies. Your excitement about the potential of their brightness and magical floatability might just sell someone on your potential to set the asses of many creatures on fire. Fireflies, they're such a tease. But I cut that one from the piece. I don't think it's necessary. I do like fireflies, though. Anyway, I hope you'll come back for more next week. These little missives are designed to inspire creative folk to get out and make something of their own. If you do enjoy my writing, please be sure to subscribe to the stream newsletter at janinemccray.substack.com. Link is in the description. And until we next meet, love what you love, and I'll see you out there making stuff.